So uh, if I don't preach well this morning, I did preach well yesterday. <laughs> but <laughs> it's wonderful to be here. <laughs> Glory to God. We've been talking about the purposes of God and our destiny. That God's will needs to be done in our lives. And uh, we, we shared from us, uh, Romans 8, 28, that in all things, God works for our good. Because we are called to his purpose. God's plan is to do us good and God works for our good. And even though we make a lot of mistakes, God still works for our good. Now, in everything and whatever situation we're going through, the purpose of God never changes. It's still the same for your life and my life. The methodology of bringing that purpose may change because our wills get into the way. And when the Bible says, when you pray, let pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means you and I have to give heaven permission. God just doesn't come along and just bust down the walls of your will and force you to do something. That's where the predestination doctrine sometimes is misinterpreted. Which says that if you are predestined for heaven, regardless of what you do, you're going to go to heaven. If you're predestined for hell, you're going to go to hell, regardless of how good you try to be. That's not what the scriptures teach. But the purpose of God remains the same, even though uh, what we do a lot of times interferes with that. And... Uh, the Bible says this in Proverbs 19, verse 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the purpose of the Lord shall prevail. That does not mean God's going to force his purpose on you. But what it does mean is even though you have plans to do this and that and everything else, God's purpose remains the same. And when God brings all our mistakes and all our obedience together, He still forms His purpose in our lives in the end. Are, 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 you, are you with me? Before you were saved, you thought everything was hunky-dory. Isn't that right? You thought everything and then you, you hit a snitch in your journey and then you turn to God. But many people who enjoy their own lives don't want to change. Because they think their lives is okay. That's why the, the wise man said, Remember the Lord your God in the days of your youth. Because there comes a day when you say, I have no pleasure in that. I have no pleasure in him. Because many times in our own way, we think we are doing pretty well. But then you get saved. And then you look back at your journey and all the things, the yucky stuff that you did. And you realize that even in that, you see an unseen hand behind the scene navigating your lives. And he said, wow. But now you're saying, we still make mistakes. Anyone here never made one? Can I set you free? Make one. Make one. Make a mistake. There are people who are so afraid to fail. I can set you free. Just fail and get it over with. And then you can join the rest of us who have failed. But even in our failures, and you look back at what God has done, it is amazing. You think, you think God authored the failure. No, he didn't. He just used the wrath of man to praise his name. Now, when you look at the scriptures, let's take Joseph for an example. God said to Joseph, this is your purpose. One day, people are going to bow to you. Now, you think that was going to be very nice, but the journey to bring that purpose about had the will of so many people involved and the pathway to there 
was a terrible pathway. He was uh, thrown into a pit, rejected by his brothers, sold as a slave, sold in the market of Egypt, became a, a slave to Potiphar, and then got accused for something he never did, and he got promoted to jail. And then in jail, he, he worked himself up and, and then began to interpret the dreams of the butler and the baker. And he probably thought, what happened to what I saw in the beginning? The purpose of God never changes. How it comes about changes because the will of people and your will and mine are involved in the journey. But ultimately, it says here, many are the plans of a man, but it's the purpose of the Lord. That purpose never changes. God still wanted the man to rule. And in the end, his brothers bow. The purpose of God never changes for your life. It may, it may, it, it may take a journey. Sometimes it's short, sometimes it's long. Because our wills are involved. Maybe God wants you to stay in Wanganui and you run out to Wellington. Or maybe run out to Auckland. Or maybe run out to the country altogether. And then come, sometime God will bring you back. Because the purpose of God is still here. And even if you don't come back, God will work the circumstances of where you are so that his purpose is, is fulfilled. Even though you find yourself in a place you shouldn't be. Are you alright? I shared with you about a, a young lady who's uh, very dear to us. Was living in Auckland and I said to her, I think you should go back to Samoa. And everybody advised her to stay here. You know, there's a better country. And as far as economy is concerned, Samoa is a better country as far as climate is concerned. As far as pineapple is concerned, as far as mango is concerned, as far as ripe banana is concerned, Samoa is a better country than here. So she went back to Samoa, and when she did, the purpose of God for her life just worked out. Now, had she stayed here, the purpose of God will still be worked out. But it will be a totally different journey altogether. Are you with me? Hallelujah. So that's where we were at. Now sometimes the purpose of God is immediately known. Sometimes it's not. That's why the Bible tells us, train up a child in the way he should go. Because the child does not immediately know the purpose of God for themselves. So you have to train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. And it'll be easier for God to navigate that life. And the reason why God says, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because your will is involved as long as you are on the planet. Let me say this. Your will is more powerful than God's will. As long as you're here. Why? Because you're sovereign over your will. Judas had seen the miraculous has seen things happen. But Judas' will was still to betray Jesus. And Jesus could not stop him. And would not stop him. Jesus won't stop you from going to hell. If you want to go to hell. And a lot of people that are going to hell said. Why did God create? I'm not, I don't believe in the God sent people to hell. God never sent anybody to hell but Christ. If you go to hell. God never sent you to hell. The reason he sent Christ to hell is so that you can get to, to heaven. If you go to hell, you go to hell on your own will. Right ahead. Go right ahead. Why? Because our wills are involved. I don't know why I put my hands on my head. Is your will up here? <laughs> the mindset. Glory to God. Are you alright? Now, the Bible says, God works all things, all things, and he works them for our good, because he has called us according to his purpose. Now, many people live and die and never know God's purpose.
People know God's purpose as a child and they grow up to be that way. People know God's purpose, but they don't like it because they think they've got a better plan. Hallelujah. Now, let me say this while it's in my mind and my heart. You know, Jesus, even Jesus had to choose. He said, is this actually your will? Now, if Jesus, who is God, struggled with the will of God and he tried to find the will of God, you and I are going to struggle to find the will of God. But Jesus gives us a perfect example. This is, if this is your will, then not my will. Why? Because on earth, your will is more powerful than his. You have to give him permission. Prayer is earthly permission for heavenly interventions. And when you allow heaven to intervene in your life, but you have to allow heaven to do that. Now, there are many people get angry at God, but never give God one iota of a chance to prove himself as God. Hallelujah. I'm not angry. I'm just trying to preach better than yesterday. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've got some friends and uh, they left to go to Australia. I told them to stay. They didn't. They went to Australia. They had a business and everything and and then uh, they decided to come back. And they came back. And they said, oh, we had to come back. We realized we made a mistake. I said, I, go, I told you not to go. He, she, she said, uh, she, said she the, 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 the wife of the pair, she said, uh, but yeah, we learned a lot when we were over there. I said, yeah, you learned a lot. You learned to listen to God, okay? <laughs> but the, the navigating of the will and the purpose of God in our lives God allows for our own will to interplay with his plan. But ultimately, if you allow God to, his purpose will prevail. And you are going to find complete satisfaction in the purpose and the will of God. Are you all right? Now, part of your purpose is you're here to fix a problem. Maybe you don't know what that problem is, and it may not be just one problem. It may be a string of problems, but you're here by God's divine purpose to see that that problem, whatever that is, or that need is met. That problem is fixed. Hallelujah. Now, there are counselors in every sphere. And every time you go to a counselor, why do you go to a counselor? Because you need help. And they help you meet a need. And the moment you go to them and they give you a solution, that counselor is elevated in your eyes. And you're going to tell people, you should go and see so-and-so. I had a friend that, uh, the funny thing, he was unsaved. He was a, a heathen to the bone. But his parents were great Christians. And every time he gets drunk, goes to the pub, and a problem comes from a friend of his, you know what he used to say? I think you need to go and see my mom and dad. <laughs> he knows where to send them. Yeah. Why? Because every time you fix a problem, you're elevated. You're promoted in a sense. Not only that, God gives you more and more authority as you continually fix problems. Selah. How many people do you ring for prayer? Why do you ring them? Because they help you fix your problem. Are you okay? And if you read through the scriptures, when David went to the war, he did not go to the war to fix Goliath. He went to the war to take lunch. And there are many times when you are, when you are willing to take lunch, you'll slay your Goliath. 
The problem is we are not even willing sometimes to turn up to church for one hour. But if you're willing to take lunch, God will use your willingness to slay a Goliath and fix a problem not just for yourself but for the multitude of others. Now when he went to take lunch, he was a total unknown. The only people that knew him were his brothers and even his brothers didn't look. What are you doing here? What have you, what's happened to the sheep? What have you done with those little sheep? He said, is there not a cause? Give me a break. I just brought you lunch. Is that how you treat your little brother? But he's a ruddy red-headed. The only one with red head. That was conceived in sin. So they probably looked at him and said, oh, oh what's he doing here? An embarrassment. He said, uh, no, is there not a cause? Give me a break. And then he heard, and he was telling stories, and, and they overheard him. And uh, he said, how come you're so cowered under with that big fella? You can't even miss him. He's so big. <laughs> and they heard what he said. Now, there must be something divine there. There must be something, there must have been a divine intervention because who would believe an unknown? And then when they told the king, the king fetched for the little boy that was unknown. And when he came to the king, he said to the king, king, don't, don't worry, I'll fix it. I'm sure that problem is mine. I fixed another two problems before. I fixed the bear and I fixed the lion. And the same God that helped me fix the bear, the same God that helped me fix the lion, is the same God that will help me fix that fellow. Now, either the king was naive, and his counselor were, counselors were naive, and his generals were stupid to listen to a boy, or there is something divine about what he said. And when he fixed the problem, he was totally elevated. He went as unknown, as an unknown, and when he left the battlefield, <laughs> when he went to take lunch, when he left the battlefield, they were singing about him. Why? He fixed a difficulty. You are here to fix a difficulty. And what God desires for you to do is not necessarily to go to a counselor all the time. God wants you to be a counselor yourself. Yeah. Not just for yourself, but those that come to you. Come to me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will, and I, either that's arrogance or that's humility, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. I'm meek and lowly. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And God wants you and I. To grow up so that we can learn to fix difficulties, not just for ourselves, but for others. Because the moment you do, you not only get elevated, God will give you more and more authority. Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had more authority after the fiery furnace than before the fiery furnace. Daniel had more authority after the lion's den than before the lion's den. And when we come through those difficult moments, and as we said before, don't hate your physical moments. Don't try and run away from your physical moments. Study your physical moments and learn from them. Hallelujah. Are you okay? And when you come out the other end, you're not only elevated in the eyes of people, you are given more authority by God and you begin to go from glory to glory to glory to glory. Hallelujah. Don't be a child all the time where you constantly run to somebody
to help you fix your problem. In the olden days, you have to go to a priest. Today, you don't have to go to a priest. You go to the greatest high priest. And God wants us to grow. God wants us to mature. So that in the maturity. We learn to. Fix the difficulties. And fulfill. A purpose for why. We came. Are you okay? Hallelujah. And when you look at the characters in the scriptures, everyone goes through the same thing. And God wants us to go through the same thing so that at the other side of the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil, for we know that thou art with me, your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Hallelujah. Surely. Surely. Question mark. Sure, question, uh, I wonder. Uh, uh, is, it, is it possible? Uh, did he really say that? He said surely. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And God's purpose is to mature us. Hallelujah. That we may fulfill our assignment. And fulfill his purpose. And accomplish our destiny. And when you look at the scriptures you see that. Abraham had to, uh, to fix the problem of walking by sight. David had to fix the problem of worshipping idols. Learning how to worship God in spirit and in truth. Noah had to fix the problem of not long suffering. Job had to fix the problem of suffering. Esther has to fix the problem of genocide. Who knows that you come to the kingdom for such a time as COVID. So instead of just arguing around the place and throwing uh, hammers at one another, let's learn to be matured and learn to navigate ourselves, knowing that uh, the things that are seen are temporary, the things that are not seen are eternal, and we don't look at the things that are seen. We look at the things that are not seen because the things that are seen are temporary. The things that are not seen are eternal. But in that, God works for our good. An exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah. Because we matured. Now there's nothing worse than going to a to a baby ward. And all the babies are old men and old women crying in their nappies with their bottles. But sometimes I fear much of that picture is often the picture of us as a church. We need to just grow up. If you eat and you exercise, and you do the things that we are instructed to do. We're going to be strong. We're going to be strong in the Lord. And the power of his might. Hallelujah. Are you okay? We are going to rise and quench all the fiery. Just, just two of the fiery darts. Of, of, uh, and, and the other 98 hit us in the face. Quenching all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And having done all to sit down. Or stand, sorry. Stand. Having your loins girded with the truth. Your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The helmet of hope or the hope of salvation. Hallelujah. The breastplate of righteousness. Hallelujah. Taking the sword of the spirit. Are you okay? 
and the word of God. Amen. Amen. And then you turn your back and a lot of people say, don't turn your back to the devil. Because there's no armory for your back. Are you kidding me? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Jehovah himself is at my back. And when we learn to do that, we are a church triumphant without spot or wrinkle that glorified Jesus going somewhere to demonstrate the grace and the power of God because we found our purpose and our destiny in him. And even in the midst of our mistakes, he still work. His grace, I almost say the word magic, but, and that's, there's nothing wrong with you, but it's not, he's not a magician. But working this purpose for our good because we are called according to his purpose. And today, let us face this year with much determination and faith. Why? Because his purpose for us as a church and for us as individuals don't change just because there's COVID around. You think he knows there's COVID around? You think he's concerned about COVID? His purpose don't change. The way he brings it about may change, but the purpose of God remain the same. Let us fix our eyes on him in whom we have to do, running our race, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher, the perfecter of our faith. If God's talking to you, I want you to stand because I want to pray for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes, Father, we shy away from the difficulties and we want to navigate ourselves around it. Father, we pray that you'll give us the wisdom and give us the courage to be able to fix the things that are before us because that is our purpose and your will for our lives and I pray that you will bless your people those that are watching by telecast those that are here and are standing on their feet those that are not we know that we are walking all of us through life and that your purpose need to be outward. So I pray for those that are responding. Those that are not. We pray for them too. And Lord that your will will be done on earth in our lives. As it should be in heaven. Or as what her, heaven has purposed for us. We bless you today. We pray, pray for those that don't know you yet. Some of them may be here. Some of them may be watching from home. I pray, dear God, that they will connect with you, find your purpose, Lord God, and live to the glory of your name. So we thank you today, Father. Minister, Lord God, that grace, that purpose into the heart of everyone that is standing today. And help us not to shy away or run around, but solve and fix the things that are before us. We bless you and we honor you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You're not known by the things you avoid. So don't avoid the difficulties. You're known by the things that you survive. And sometimes you barely survive them. But you're going to be known for that. God bless you.
Have a great Sunday. And uh, don't eat too much. If you have a hollow hollow, we live at 77 Surrey Road. Bring us some. God bless all the Filipinos.